Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Well, hello, Knife Junkies, and welcome to episode number 147 of the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob DeMarco. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. As you know, it's the place for knife newbies like myself, knife junkies like you, to learn everything about knives and knife collecting. Uh, We are, uh, of course, in the midweek episode. That's where uh, Bob and I chat about knives. The Sunday episode is our interview show. And, of course, Thursday Night Knives is the Knife Junkies Live video show on Facebook and YouTube. So uh, three chances to catch the Knife Junkie throughout the week. And we're so uh, appreciative that you are here with us on this midweek Wednesday. If you are a Patreon member, you do have early access to the uh, to the podcast and mm-hmm. some of the videos and the bonus content, that kind of thing. So you're probably seeing this uh, midweek podcast on Tuesday, Bob. So a little uh, sneak peek for our for our patron members. But speaking of Patreon, something coming up uh, either two nights or tomorrow night, uh, Thursday, September seventeenth. If you're a, if you're a knife junkie follower. Yeah, that's right. Uh, for the gentleman junkies, that's the uh, the folks given ten dollars a month or more, and that's not restricted just to men. Gentleman junkie referring to the knife style, the gentleman knife. We have gentleman junkies at ten dollars a month. We have at five dollars a month the tactical junkie, and then uh, the traditional junkie at three dollars a month. All are appreciated. All get stickers, uh, but at the ten dollar level, you can be uh, you are automatically entered into the uh, monthly knife giveaway. And this month it's the SOG uh, Pentagon XR, uh, mm-hmm. a fine knife. I, I've been showing it off a lot recently, but I have it sealed up for shipping now. So I don't want to, oh, okay. I don't want to <laughs> unseal it, but um, everyone knows it. Uh, 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 Gideon's Tactical has a great video on it recently. A lot of people are are showing that knife off. So definitely check it out. It's a, it, it is the new iteration of a great old SOG and they made it a great new SOG. So. Okay. So that uh, monthly knife drawing for the uh, Knife Junkies Patreon members uh, is the third Thursday. Traditionally, last month we had to uh, uh, do it a week later, but uh, uh, the third Thursday of every month is our uh, traditional time that we try to do these uh, these knife giveaways. And again, that's coming up Thursday, September 17th. That's going to be on the Knife Junkies Thursday Night Knives YouTube and Facebook live video show. Still time for you to join. If you uh, are not yet a member, uh, join and you'll get in tomorrow's uh, knife giveaway, theknifejunkie.com slash Patreon, theknifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Patreon. So uh, always a, a fun show on Thursday nights, but uh, always fun when we get to see the the wheels spinning around and yeah. where is it going to land? Who's going to win? I love that. I love that. Uh, uh, we used to use uh, a different sort of uh, random number generator, but then Jim found this awesome wheel and wheels make everything more fun, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and so, and the con- yeah. That- and the confetti blows and showers down. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> so Jim, me. Jim. Yes. Yes. I've been remiss. I've been remiss in many of uh, the past weeks in asking you this. We're always talking about me, and I'm happy with that most of the time. However, <laughs> I want to know what are you carrying these days? We we haven't pocket checked you in a long time. So what's your what are you carrying today, sir? So you're going to do a pocket check on the knife newbie? No, that's right, sir. You're not so noob anymore, man. It's been almost well, two years. Well, I, I am still a noob uh, compared to you and lots of others. Um, I'll be honest, I don't buy a whole lot of knives. Um, I, uh, most of my collection uh, has been given to me <laughs> by you and, and, and some others. Um, I'll preface it by saying that uh, my three most carried knives, if you will, uh, is is what I have right here. So I'll, I'll do that for the pocket check, if you don't mind. Let's go so. wide on that, Jim. Uh, Okay, make me be wide on camera. Jesus. <laughs> All right. All right. So everybody is probably familiar with the green CRKT box. That's one of my my dailies. It's the CRKT CEO. Learn how to get this camera figured out. And I'll be honest, this came from uh, Stu, our good buddy at Stone and Steel up in Vermont. 
And I love this little knife because that's what I use to open the majority of packages that I get uh, in the mail and uh, wife's mail and things like that. I, uh, I keep it right at the uh, near the front door. We have a little table, kind of an entry table. It's where I keep my keys, my wallet, my money clip that often doesn't have any money in it, <laughs> but I still carry it. And that's where I keep these three knives because I use them every day. So the CRKT is, uh, is one of them. Um, I'll go wide again to show the next one, if you will. Uh, folks know that uh, Bob gave me this one, the little buck knife. And I love this. I love the, the handle. And of course, I just love the, the knife itself. So Use this to open open a bunch of packages and carry that. That's that. This and the next one I'm going to show are one of the two true daily carries. The CRKT I leave at the door and use it every day. So I I still kind of classify that as a pocket check knife, if you will. Oh yeah, yeah. Wait, hold that. Hold the uh, buck up for a second and and close the blades up. Yeah. So that's called a canoe. That's a traditional style called a canoe. And if you look at the handle, the handle looks a lot like a canoe. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. that's, yeah, I, I just love this little knife. I yeah, love this was own handles. Yeah. And this was, uh, gosh, way back, Bob, I, I can't even remember. It might've been single digit episodes of the podcast, uh, yeah. you know, in, in yeah. the tens, twenties, or, or maybe even not even in the tens. Uh, we did a show on, uh, you pulled out five or six different knives. You were yeah. kind of talking about them and you said, which one would you like? And I was like, well, you know, if I had to pick one, I would like that one. And you said, well, here, here it is. And I was like, you mean to just carry it for a while? And you were like, no, here. <laughs> so <laughs> take, <laughs> take it. And maybe you didn't mean I kept it this long, but I have kept it this long. So. <laughs> I've been wondering, Jim, when's my canoe coming back? No, I'm just kidding. No, no, uh, no. That, 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 that boat has already sailed, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Yeah. Perfect night for you, Jim. Yeah, no, I love it. And of course, everybody knows I uh, I started out with the little Swiss Army knife, the multi-purpose tool, if you will, that was in my pocket. I've always carried that for years and years, even before I got involved with the Knife Junkie and uh, started started learning about knives. Always uh, felt a need to, to have a, a pocket knife. And of course, the things I love about it are, of course, if I can get the camera right, the Yes. Toothpick. Yeah. Yes. And just and, so you uh, all know, those toothpicks can be bought in little five packs on Amazon. If yeah. you buy a if you buy a Victorinox secondhand and uh, you really don't want to use a toothpick that came to you secondhand, you so, can always uh, buy five packs of them. So and that was a great little tip you shared with me a while back because uh, you know I've seen some of these and actually have I probably have five of these little knives everywhere. I've got one that I keep in the car, uh, uh, one down here, as well as another Swiss Army knife that's just a single blade that I keep down here to open packages when I'm in the basement office. Uh, one of these in my office at work. I mean, I have them everywhere. So I know one of them, I had lost the toothpick and I was like, oh, you know, might as well just throw the knife away and get a new one. So didn't learn, <laughs> didn't know about the uh, the toothpicks until you told me. So that's, uh, that's great. Cool. So those are, uh, those are, three of the knives that I mostly keep in my pocket pretty much every day. That's a, that's a solid collection. I love that yeah. CEO. What a cool knife. They've, yeah. they've made a couple of iterations of that uh, already in different materials. Uh, the canoe, I, I, I need to get another canoe into my life. I'm not sure uh, what, I'm not sure if GEC ever made one, but uh, yeah, great. And then the Swiss army knives. Yeah. You got to have Got to have a couple. You, Look at that. You can admire it. You can admire it from afar, Bob. This <laughs> this knife, which used to be yours, is now mine. So, and I got to say, it, not for nothing, Jim, but Buck makes a very good uh, high value slip joint. If you don't want to be spending GEC money on the slip joint, Buck is a great alternative to Case, and I love Case. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. Well, and I, you know, they're not uh, they're not pocket check knives, but I have uh, three other Bucks that I bought. Uh, at auction in various places that kind of start a mini buck collection, if you will. That's the, the nice. most uh, brand of knives that I have is buck. So uh, yeah. Interesting. All right. That's right. Hey, you uh, got quickly, that cool 110. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. I, I was I, remembering I was just... that cool 110. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry. And now, and how we did research. 
and found out its lineage, which is cool. Yeah. You can do that with Buck. You can do that with Case. There are some knife brands with just by these uh, cryptic little markings. If you look up the the table, you can find out when, uh, even what time of year uh, some of these knives were produced. Right. So, yeah, that was that was pretty cool, and uh, makes it makes it fun to to kind of know, you know, uh, how old it is or where it came from, that type of thing. Uh, you pocket checked me. How about you? I'm going to throw the turn the tables back on you. What? what's in your pocket or, or near and dear to you right now? Uh, today I'm carrying my Sabenza, something that I don't carry often, but is just such a, a great knife. Uh, like many knives in my collection, I dropped and blunted the tip, as you can see, against my thinning hairline there. And uh, so I'm going to send this back to, uh, I'm not back to, I'm going to send this to uh, Jared Neve. I just haven't gotten around to it yet and uh, have him hand sharpen it and make it an absolute razor because these are really awesome, awesome knives. We take them for granted, but the Sabenza, this is a 21, such a spectacular knife, so thinly ground, so nicely hollow ground. And uh, I've never been satisfied with the edge I've gotten on it. And uh, Jared's a master, or I'm sure he would bristle at the term, but he is an excellent, excellent sharpener and on his way to being a master. I think you have to do 10,000 hours of a thing to be a master, but uh, who knows? Maybe he has. He does it all freehand, and he's sharpened a number of my knives. They're gorgeous. Uh, but look, look at that tip. <sighs> Just sticks in my craw, man. It's micro, but it's there. So, uh, but anyway, it's Sunday. I figured I'd carry a classy knife. I don't know. <laughs> all right. Well, we, uh, of course, record this uh, midweek supplemental on Sundays, as Bob said. That's the reason for, uh, I don't know if he's growing his beard out now or not. I am. But I'm not just being a bum. <laughs> Lars is coming off the mountain. It's wintertime. I'm going to grow this until... Yeah, but you did wash your hair and put on a clean shirt, so... I did. <laughs> I did. Well, they can't smell if it's clean, but uh, well, that's trust true. me. That's, that's, <laughs> that's kind of like uh, we've got good and evil going on. I'm in the white shirt. You're in the black oh, shirt, yeah. kind of. <laughs> we color coordinated our wardrobe, folks. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, speaking uh, about uh, being on video and being able to see us here on the midweek supplemental episode of the Knife Junkie podcast, the Knife Junkie, of course, has a uh, YouTube channel, thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. And if you are not yet subscribed, we would certainly appreciate it if you did. Just go to thenifejunkie.com slash YT subscribe thenifejunkie.com slash YT subscribe. That's for YouTube, of course, uh, YT subscribe. And that way you can uh, subscribe and click the little bell notification so you don't miss any of the Knife Junkies videos. And Bob, uh, big plans, a lot of videos coming up in the next couple of weeks. Yep, yep. Uh, this is probably the second time in a row I've filmed, like maybe filmed. Uh, as a professional, I used to bristle at that, but uh, I videotaped. I didn't even tape them. I shot uh, five videos of, uh, of uh, the past two or three weeks and just kind of let them dribble out uh, with scheduled releases. And this week, I'm going to shoot a couple. Uh, uh, the first one is inspired by this, uh, the new Shining Mountain Bowie, the new meaning, new to me, uh, Shining Mountain Bowie. I feel like I'm in a place where I can make a Bowie collection. So I'm gonna make a Bowie collection. This does not include clip point folders. Uh, this is just, uh, you know, big American clip point blades. Uh, then I'm gonna do uh, a video on this knife, the Medford Gentleman Jack. It's a slip joint uh, made by the Medford people. Med company. And then I'm going to do a collection of Warncliffe knives, my collection of folding Warncliffe's. I feel the time has come. And then I have this knife here. Whoops. Sorry. I have this knife here. Uh, this is my Condor Hudson Bay. It gets a lot of abuse outside. I'm, I, I will say use because uh, I have... Uh, I have destroyed many, many a shrub. When we moved in here, it was shrub central, and I got rid of a lot of them. And this is what I did it with. Uh, but it was road hard and put away wet um, and like a horse uh, to maintain its, you know, optimal sort of uh, performance. It has to be um, maintained and I haven't maintained it. So I'm going to do a video on maintaining this, cleaning up the blade, de-rusting it. Uh, if you can see, I most recently used it to chop some 
roots uh, while I was digging a, a, a post hole, and uh, I connected with some rocks. So I have to sharpen that out. I'm going to do a video on, on all that. And then uh, lastly, there's a video I made in uh, July, early July, right after um, the 4th of July on three small knives. Uh, the Finch Runtley, a cool little knife. Uh, I, incidentally, I won it in the, um, in the giveaway of the, uh, the pass around group. The CRKT Pete, uh, which I got from uh, Women Carry Knives and the Cold Steel Kiridashi. They're three uh, wicked little uh, small blades. I did a bunch of cardboard cutting. And then afterward, I uh, talked about the knives themselves. I posted it, uh, but private, as I do with everything before I release it. And then I forgot all about it. Just kind of saw it in my queue. So I'm going to put that out too. So lots of videos coming. All right. Well, I understand the uh, kind of set it in a forget it mode because I, I often do yeah. very good about setting it. But... Uh, <laughs> And then it will actually do very good about forgetting it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And then you don't check it. That's what I, you know, right. uh, I, right. I, when I went on vacation recently, I scheduled a whole bunch of videos to release. I'm like, look at how diligent I am. While I'm gone, all these videos will pop up. It'll look like, like I'm there and I'm doing all this stuff. And, uh, you know, you, you still have to press done after you schedule it. And mm. uh, pressing the done thing is the part I, I forgot. So none of those came out. Kind of very technical kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. All right. Hey, a uh, lot more still to come in the uh, Knife Junkies Midweek podcast. We're going to cover a couple of uh, stories in Knife Life news. We're going to take a look at uh, the Knife Junkies State of the Collection, where he's going to talk about uh, Bark River, Boker, and uh, Tops, but not what you may think of when you hear about uh, the Knife Junkies uh, State of the Collection. And uh, speaking of one of his uh, Bowie knives there that... Um, he talked about needing to do a video perhaps on cleaning up. We're going to have a storage tip about how to actually keep your knives and keep them safe and, uh, you know, keep them from uh, maybe getting rust or uh, banged up or uh, dropping on their tip. If uh, you know anybody that, that may do that. <laughs> so all that's yeah. still to come on uh, episode 147 of the Knife Junkie podcast. Got a question or comment? Call the Knife Junkies listener line at 724-466-4487. And we certainly would love for you to call the listener line. We would love to uh, be able to put together a little audiogram that has your uh, message on it, uh, your uh, your tip of the week, your um, way you like to store knives, way you like to clean knives. Maybe uh, you've got a favorite knife that uh, you'd like to talk about or whatever, whatever the case may be. We would love for you to call the listener line at 724-466-4487 and uh, let us know. Bob, uh, Jim, uh, yes? sorry, before you go on that, I just want to mention uh, someone did call the listener line this past week and it sounded like they attempted to make a message, uh, but it was... Uh, not not breathing, but I could hear it was like uh, an open line, and then they hung up. So, <laughs> you know, it it you're not going to reach me. Uh, it actually just buzzes right through to the to the message. So, right. uh, definitely wait a second and leave a message. Right. Yeah, it is a recorded line. So yeah, it's twenty four seven. So anytime you want to call, leave a message, uh, question or comment or you know criticism, whatever you want to call, leave a message. And again, we would love to uh, to share it on the podcast. Uh, to uh, share with all the listeners. All right, state of the collection. Uh, let's, I mean, I'm sorry. For, <laughs> I'm, I'm anxious to get there. Let's do Knife Life News first, Bob. A couple of uh, stories that we want to talk about. Uh, first of all, with uh, Spyderco, I think is where you want to start. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this year they started doing their uh, time dripped uh, reveals instead of in January at SHOT Show, uh, highlighting everything that they plan to come out with in the following year and then having people wait and, and complain about waiting uh, for these models to come out. They came up with this system where they do a timed drip, basically, and uh, they're on reveal number six. And to me, reveal number six uh, is, uh, well, as as they mentioned here in in uh, Knife News, it's, it's a lot of uh, older models rehashed with different steels. Uh, you have uh, the, the the salt line and the Pacific um, coming out with all LC200N instead of H1. And this really cool green handle is uh, is a new a new part of things on the on the 
sort of rust-free line on the, I don't know what you want to call it, the maritime line. They call it the salt line, but it's for knives that are used in real high uh, moisture, high humidity um, sort of uh, environments. And and a lot of the blades, like like the one featured here, that's, I think that's an Andela. Maybe it's an Endura, uh, but it's basically their regular versions put in these sort of uh, rust-free sort of scenarios. Also, uh, they have the Andela coming out in the um, S35, uh, which is new for them. I don't know too much S35 from uh, Spyderco other than some Sprint models that they have uh, the police for in the Andela. Uh, also in K390, uh, which is interesting. The, the uh, Man Bug, Warren Cliff, which is interesting. But the one that really uh, caught my eye is the Patadese, I think is how it's pronounced, but it's a small version of the patata. And the patata is uh, one of one of my favorite spider cos. I don't carry it often because uh, I feel the tip is delicate, but it's a it's a modern spider co take on the uh, classic Sardinian folder. Sardinia, island off of Italy. Uh, a lot of people carry this patata over over the years. And uh, it's a folding kind of utility knife kind of, um, well, it's mostly a utility knife. Imagine cutting a sausage and some cheese while you're on a romantic date, uh, you know, out in the Sardinian uh, coastline, and then someone comes upon you and you have to vanquish them. And you might use this for all of that, the patata. Uh, also, incidentally, Extrema Ratio, uh, a, a tactical Italian knife company, makes a beautiful version of this knife. Uh, but this one, the Patata uh, that came out a couple of years ago, uh, part of their ethnic line, is a nearly four-inch blade. I guess some a lot of people find that a little large. And so they they turned it into the Patadese, which means, uh, I guess, small Patata. And I think that's a, a great choice, great idea. And I'm glad to see that this knife hasn't gone, uh, you know, they haven't kicked it to, to pasture. I'm not sure if they make the large version anymore. Uh, but what a beautiful knife. It's got these gorgeous contoured handles, uh, G10. And just uh, to me, looks like a uh, an Italian racing boat. You hear me say that about a couple of knives. I have three knives that I say that about this. Uh, the new Mark I from Attention to Detail, Mercantile, and then the Boker um, slash Marlowe uh, Swale. They look like these um, modern things, but a modern design from the 60s, like something really classic and uh, sleek and kind of just stylish. So there you go. Right. Okay. So a lot uh, a lot there from Spyderco and their, uh, and their latest reveal. So. Yep. Yeah. Yep, indeed. Right. A lot of older models in new steels, different steels. Okay. All right. Well, I guess if uh, you don't have a new model or whatever, you might as well uh, make improvements to the old models and uh, give you more models. <laughs> or, yeah. Or if you're a collector, which Spyderco is set up for, Spyderco is kind of like case knives. They're set up for the collector. You know, you like a certain model, we'll give it to you in a thousand different configurations. Right. You know, and then and then you have dealer exclusives and and all of that. So Spider Coat is a great model to be a collector of. Hmm. All right. All right. Uh, one more story in uh, Knife Life News. Uh, OKC with a budget friendly titanium frame lock flipper. Yep. Ontario Knife Company. Uh, they're very well known for their large survival knives and then for their smaller uh, folding knives like the rat series uh they have come out with a new knife uh well let's see let's back up last year they came out with an affordable um uh, titanium frame lock folder with uh micarta called the shikra and to follow that so now the shikra it, it had uh you know the the sort of luxurious handle if you will with the titanium and the micarta but it had i, I believe an os 8 blade and i don't i don't mean to say but i'm saying that for context it's an affordable titanium frame lock um and what makes it affordable is that choice of steel so they came out they did sort of the, a follow-up to that and it's their new knife um called the uh uh, I'm sorry, these names are the Bezra. I was going to say Besra, but I think it's Bezra. And if you look at it, it kind of has some, uh, the blade to me looks like a Snex blade. It looks like kind of like the Buster. 
and uh, and then the handle uh, looks like a Will Moon handle to me. Um, and and I'm not saying either of those things to say that this is a derivative knife. It's just sort of a knife uh, in the zeitgeist, in the spirit of the times. You know what I mean? It's like uh, it's a Warncliffe. It's it's titanium. It's micarta. And and it's affordable. I think these things are going to go for sixty bucks, fifty five bucks, uh, and uh, and it's an Aus eight blade, three inches, which kind of knocks it out of the the running for me personally. But uh, I got to say, it's a handsome looking knife. And if you've got sixty bucks to spend, you love a Warren Cliff kind of sheep's foot thing and uh, a blade, and you want something modern but with good materials, man, I, I would definitely go for this because. They have a good lineage with inexpensive knives. The Rat Model 1, the Rat Model 2 are classics for a reason. They're excellent, excellent knives. And if the same sort of attention to detail, the same sort of uh, value goes into these knives, uh, and you like the design, I, I can't see how you could lose. All right. Okay. Well, that's uh, that's pretty cool. That's, um, I was going to say not often you hear about uh, knives in the, you know, 50, 60, 70 dollar range, at least what you know, the ones that we're talking about here on the Knife Junkie podcast. So that's a uh, that's kind of my more my price range. <laughs> yeah, and it's uh, materials for price. You know, micarta is kind of a one of what it's it's um eclipsed G10 in terms of it's kind of like a lux tactical, if you will. Uh that sounds so corny. What what I mean is like uh, it's it's not a, a a luxurious handle material like uh, like you might find on a cust like a lot of custom knives, uh, but it's a little it's a step beyond G10 in in sort of warmth and feel and it's and you can get a high polish on it and it's still grippy. Whereas I feel with G10, once you get a high polish on it, you, you don't get the grip. You lose some of the grip. Mm -hmm. So aesthetically and uh, practically micarta is a little bit more of a luxurious material than g10 or or frn and then you have titanium frame lock side which keeps it light and titanium is a you know it's just a higher material than steel but but it's much lighter and uh and then you have the blade the blade looks great it looks like it's very very useful but, uh, you know, it's not the super high-end steel. But who among us really needs the super high-end steel? I cannot raise my hand Yeah, to that question. All right. All right. What do you think about these uh, two knives? Again, love to uh, hear your comments, your feedback. Listener line 724-466-4487, 724 Thoughts about these two knives or uh, anything else that Bob has talked about or will talk about on this uh, episode of the podcast. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, you can also shoot him an email at bob at thenifejunkie.com and, uh, and give us your feedback. Still to come, we're going to talk about how to store knives, and Bob's going to take his remote cam and go show off uh, his storage option of choice. But before we get there, we're going to let Bob talk about a lot of his uh, uh, knives in his collection lately uh, with the state of the collection, and that's coming up. Ever order a knife online and have it delivered to the office so your wife doesn't know? Chances are you're a knife junkie. And I know Bob has never done that shameful if you have done that shame on you okay shame oh. shame, shame. <laughs> but before and i get to the no i was gonna say bob i know please. that i know you have had and will continue to have knives delivered to your office but in your defense it's not because you don't want your wife to see them it's because you want to get them immediately during the day when you're there at the office right buddy well th that is true that is true and actually uh since my wife has been working from home I've actually been having them delivered to home because I know she's here. Uh, a, a lot of the big uh, part of it is I hate a package sitting on my front stoop, especially when you've seen those ring or, or you know, those uh, yeah. uh, doorbell cam videos of scumbags coming up and stealing packages. Um, so uh, that's why I was having it delivered to the office, I swear. And uh, now that my wife's at home, I have them delivered to home because now I know where they get there quicker. You know, it, it's, it's so work. Secure. It takes... Yeah. Right. And at work, they sit on it for a day. I mean, how many times have I gone to the post office at work and been like, I know it's here. Where is it? <laughs> and they're like, oh, it's, uh, it's over there. Somewhere. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, let's see if any of these knives that Bob is going to talk about in the state of the collection have been uh, recent ones or uh, uh, or maybe uh, oldies but goodies. But we'll find out. Uh, 
I think Mark River, Boker, and Tops are some of the knives you're going to talk about. Yes, but before we get to those, and this is what I, uh, what I was going to say before, I, I want to talk about a knife real quick out of my collection because we were talking about Spyderco uh, that I, I never carry anymore, but it's so cool. And uh, it's the uh, Uliza by, uh, this was the first uh, Uli Henneke knife that uh, the uh, that Spyderco made. And the first knife I'm aware of that was production. He's a German designer, ex-police officer. And this is kind of in the spirit of and in the size of the police model. It was out for a couple of years, um, maybe two or three years. But when I first saw it, I th it looked so much like a knife I had recently drawn in my sketchbook, I had to buy it. And uh, it is a great knife. And uh, no, you can't have it. So I just wanted to mention it. Very cool knife. So first, the Bark River. Shining Mountain Bowie. Okay, I thought this thing was un unobtainable. I thought I couldn't get this thing. And then I saw it in my very favorite configuration and I snatched it up. Oh, so sorry. This is the, uh, look at this. This is a 10 and 3 8 inch, uh, quarter inch thick blade with antique stacked leather handles. Look at that. It's uh, made to, they sort of antique to the handles. And uh, so now that I've gotten this knife, I feel I can make a Bowie collection because a Bowie collection knife, uh, I'm sorry, a Bowie collection video, because this knife uh, kind of is the final piece. It's the, it's the luxury uh, 10 inch bladed uh, Bowie knife I've wanted for a long time. It mocks the, the sort of shape of the knife that Brad Pitt had in uh, Inglorious Bastards and uh, the moment I saw that movie, I knew I knew it was uh, a blade shape I had to have. Look at that. I was, well, was going to say, I'm going to pull the other angle up there and let folks see it. So now this is the companion Bowie to the one my folks got me for my birthday, the V44 with the Moran-style um, green micarta handle. And uh, boy, gosh, man, has this not wet my appetite for Bark River Bowies. Holy mackerel. They have another one I want called the Vest Pocket, which you would have to have a pretty big vest to fit in, but that's a, uh, a sort of a traditional pattern for Bowies, just like uh, just like the V40, the Raider style. And I'm not sure what this is. I guess it's the Shining Mountain style, but uh, different Bowies from different places, uh, you know, have different shapes. And that, uh, that, vest pocket is is one i definitely want look at this thing anyway so here it is and uh yeah found a screaming deal on it and incidentally while i was just doing that i cut myself <laughs> jesus what i cut myself right here right there i was being all cool with the knife and i cut myself right on my finger right on the edge that's just to show you mike stewart you owe me, buddy. No, I'm just kidding. Mike Stewart uh, of uh, Bark River Knives. I would love to have him on. He is a legend. I've reached out to him, but uh, maybe I need to reach out to Rob Bixby to get in touch with the guy because uh, I know he's very, very busy. But he is a legend in the knife making world. He was he was blackjack knives back in the day, and uh, mm -hmm. they still produce a couple of knives for blackjack on the high end. Blackjack, it's weird. They have some uh, since they were bought out. Uh, they bought it from uh, I think. Uh, Chinese company bought it from uh, bought it from Mike Stewart, and they started producing all the models, but in very cheap form. But a couple of the models they still have Bark River produce something like that. If I'm if I'm messing this up, people let me know. But I do have a Bark River produced blackjack knife, and it's man, it's gorgeous. All right. Well, uh, if you want to see the cut in action, you'll just have to kind of rewind a little bit and see where the, ah. the nick actually occurred and put it in slow-mo. And Yeah, check the arterial spray. <laughs> right. All right. All right, moving from uh, Bark River to uh, Boker. This is a uh, knife that uh, uh, a viewer sent you. Yeah, our good friend Lavender Pants 86 otherwise known as Lavender Pants, uh, sent me this. 
the Boker XL Kalashnikov Bowie. Look at that. Oh, I'm sorry, not XL. This is XXL. This is uh, four and a half inches, uh, that blade. They make an XL that is like nearly four inches, I believe. So this is the biggest one they make. And you know what? I haven't done my research. I'm not sure if this is an exclusive uh, to Blade HQ or any of the other uh, companies, but uh, <laughs> it is a very big switchblade. And it's funny how it slaps out. It's so big, it doesn't feel so tight when it comes out. And and I've had uh, plenty of other Kalashnikovs, and uh, they they shoot out you know so hard and and you know so tight. And this has a sort of I don't want to say sloppy because it's not sloppy, but you can just feel the size of the blade when this thing opens. Uh, it's impressive. It's very thin. It's very light. Um, I've carried it. I've carried it uh, even even when I shouldn't have, I've carried this and uh, it fits very nicely uh, in pocket. It fits nicely in the waistband. Um, I dig this knife and it was a gift from Lavender Pants. Who's a great guy and a great uh, uh, steadfast viewer of Thursday night knives. Right. And uh, um, he had it, thought it was cool. He's like, check this out. He, uh, he sent it to me. I got back to him. Like, let me have it for two weeks. I'll do a video. He said, you know what? My wife's not too fond of it you know being around wow. right now with little kids so why don't you just keep it i'm like wow uh, cool so thank you very much sir yeah. I appreciate it well i think uh lavender pants if i'm not mistaken was actually the first ever super chat on the knife junkies youtube channel you i think you're correct about that yeah, i think you're so correct about back. that yeah he is also from my home state and uh you know great guy great guy great taste in knives yeah all right so thanks, Lavender. We, uh, I know the Knife Junkie appreciates that. And uh, definitely uh, more content for the Knife Junkie's YouTube channel that we uh, mentioned is at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. If you're watching right now on YouTube, you, of course, are aware of that. But maybe your friend or someone else you know that uh, is a Knife Junkie or wannabe Knife Junkie is not aware of the Knife Junkie's YouTube channel or the podcast. Do us a favor and uh, share this show with them. If I can say all those shows in a row, share this show with them. Uh, we would certainly uh, appreciate the, uh, the added folks uh, being uh, involved in the Knife Junkie's uh, YouTube channel and podcast and all that kind of good stuff. All right, Bob, moving on to Tops, which I, I think is a knife brand that you really love. But uh, you, this Tops story you're going to talk about has a little twist to it. Yeah, no, I, I just wanted to announce that I'm I'm getting rid of this knife, the uh, the Tops Cut 4.0. And it's not because it's not an awesome knife. It is. Incidentally, it's I bought it because I thought it would make a great... Um, uh, EDC sort of uh, under the shirt uh, in the waistband carry. And actually it is and does. Um, I like a rounded and shorter handle for that purpose uh, so that it doesn't stab into, into my well-defined abs um, uh, and obliques. Uh, and so I like this rounded handle, but I just never find myself carrying this knife uh, in particular. For no, for no reason. It is a great knife. So I am going to get rid of it. I am going to sell it to someone who wants it. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is because I, I got, uh, I ordered a monkey thumper from Black Rock Knives. If you don't know Black Rock Knives on Instagram, go check them out. But uh, uh, sorry, Jim, I should have let you know that was the other part of the story. Uh, it, it's because I don't have too much room for ringed things in my life. I got this ring the most important one. I got a, a couple of karambits um, and I'm getting this monkey thumper. And if you don't know Black Rock Knives, he makes some really, really cool, uh, beautiful knives, uh, all fixed blades and all, you know, pretty kind of tactical-ish. And uh, the one that I ordered is going to be a little double-edged karambity knife. And so I figured since I never carry this, it is such a great knife. Someone should be carrying it and using it. I'm going to let it go. So uh, I never thought I'd let a tops knife go. Yeah. But I just figure why hold on to it just because it's cool. I have a lot of other knives I hold on to just because they're cool. This one should be used and carried. Right. So, boom. 
Well, and as a uh, longtime listeners know to the podcast, that's kind of one of the things that the Knife Junkie has been um, struggling with, if you will, you know, is that uh, criteria for knives to collect. And I think, you know, one of one of the um, not steadfast rules, but one of the uh, uh, ever increasing in value rules is that uh, it should be carried and you should carry it and, you know, use it to somewhat of a, an extent. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's the difficult part of refining the collection, if you will, is having to let some of them go. Yeah. I mean, there are plenty of knives that I have that I, I know I'm not going to carry, which I'm fine with. Um, but the ones that I, I, I put on and then I'm like, mm, maybe I'll put, you know, maybe I'll carry something else today. Then I know this is, this should probably move on. Right. All right. Well, we've uh, still got some uh, show left. We're going to talk about uh, storage options, and we're actually going to uh, kind of let Bob go remote cam and uh, yeah. show off a storage option, if we will. That's all still to come here on the Knife Junkie podcast, episode number 147. Visit the Knife Junkie at thenifejunkie.com to catch all of our podcast episodes, videos, photos, and more. <laughs> I miss Terry Rounds. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> videos right. and more. That's right. <laughs> Here on the knife junkie, uh, my voice can't go that low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we uh, we love Terry. Love that uh, the little bumpers, the intro, extra, our, our uh, uh, appreciation to him and thoughts and best wishes to him as well. As uh, we're all struggling through this uh, coronavirus situation and trying to make the best of it and uh, stay healthy while also, you know, trying to do our jobs and, and live our life and, uh, you know, kind of carry on with everything. All right. Uh, storage tips. That's uh, our kind of yeah. final show segment here, if you will. I think uh, way back in the day, uh, you got a call on the listener line about how you stored your knives. So I think we kind of talked about this a little bit, you know, way back many, many months ago on the audio version of the podcast, but now that we're uh, video and audio, we uh, we thought we would kind of hit this again and kind of talk about the Knife Junkie's preferred method of, uh, of storing knives. So I'm going to go off screen and let you go full screen, and then we'll bring in the other camera as well to kind of be able to show mm -hmm. that off. Okay, so um, uh, the Pelican case is a, is a very common and uh, popular way, I guess I should say, of storing your knives, and, and I like it. Uh, I like the safety of it, the safety to your knives of it, and I like how you can lock it up. And um, even the portability is not is is a plus, but there are a couple of reasons why I don't like the Pelican case. And one of them is the portability. Uh, if someone you know breaks into your place, it's easier to pick up a, a Pelican case and run out with it. You see a Pelican case, you know there's something valuable in it. You don't know if it's a camera, you don't know if it's a piece of audio equipment, you don't know if it's a collection of knives, but you're going to take it. Um, I mean, you're going to take it if you're a thief. Uh, so for me, I've always liked, and, and then the other thing I don't like about the Pelican case is that you're only looking at this part of the knife when it's open, you're only looking at the top part, or if you put it in, you're looking at the bottom part. To me, uh, I like to look at the whole knife and, uh, obviously in a Pelican case, you don't have that kind of room. Uh, I like to see the knife from the side. So I have always preferred um, the brand I've used as Craftsman, but I've always preferred the metal tool case with the drawers uh, that you see in in uh, in shops and stuff like that. So um, I've had this, uh, I've had a Craftsman for a while, that top portion there. And uh, it's got a, uh, it's got a door that lifts up and I'm going to do a video on this and we're going to go in deep. Uh, and look at it, but uh, the top part, should, should I pick up the camera, Jim? Let's see, let me see. Might lose a little audio here, but so wait, let me, let me just show you from here first. That top portion uh, has, uh, uh, has the door that opens up and that's uh, on the top, that's where all my top drawer knives are. And then going down, you have different, uh, different types of knives and I'll show them in a second, uh, but the reason I want to show this off is I got the bottom portion just uh, yesterday, and that bottom portion uh, allows for the storage of many more of my knives. I have a lot of dangerous stuff in this room. I have two girls. They're great. They love knives. They know about knife safety, but they have friends also, and 
I don't know, man. I used to snoop around when I was a kid, and uh, I'm afraid they're going to come snooping around in here at some point and accidentally open something up and hurt themselves. So I wanted to get as much as I could locked up. And uh, this is going to be much harder to make off with if you're a thief and you come into the house. Uh, not to say that anything that it's not impossible. Of course you could. But a pelican case, you can pick up and run. Uh, this be a little bit more difficult to manage. Now, I'm going to get up for a second, and I'm going to just bring you in real quick to show you uh, the drawers and, and kind of the setup of it. Okay. All right. Well, I will uh, take you off screen while you're uh, doing that, while you're moving around, getting everything set up, and remind everybody that we are talking about uh, storage tips, uh, how to store your knives, uh, how to uh, keep them safe and secure, uh, lots of uh, different options, and Bob is uh, going to be talking about the uh, the uh, Craftsman. That's the brand he has, but uh, that is a brand name. So any of the Craftsman-style tool chest, if you will, are uh, great uh, solutions for uh, being able to uh, to store your knives. So let's see if we can uh, go to that screen and uh, see if we can hear Bob. We got this up here. And then over here, we got fixed blades, large cold steels, other knives. So here we go. And then we got these kind of things and, and larger blades. And then down here, I have sharpening tools and other kind of things. So... Uh, I always do this. I always forget to unmute my mic. A <laughs> great example of Bob's uh, storage there, as you can see. And uh, bring Bob back on screen. Whoops, he's not back in his desk yet. So uh, uh, as you can see, his uh, Craftsman storage cabinet there. And uh, Bob kind of went through really quickly some of the uh, opening up the drawers. I wish you'd have kept, kept showing a little bit more. Sorry. Though. All right, so here's the deal. I, I wasn't able to turn the orientation of the camera. This is the first time we've done this. We'll work this out and 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 figure out ways to move the camera, uh, but I couldn't see what I was doing. So I am going to do a video of this, uh, and I'll light it, and I'll just kind of uh, run you through how I organize my stuff, uh, if you care. It, it'll be up. Uh, but I love these things because you can open them up and see all of your knives lined up, and, uh, and then you can lock them up so that uh, curious little hands don't get to them. And uh, yeah, I love it. Uh, yeah, that's how all tool <laughs> tool drawers should be set up, just loaded with knives. Yeah, no, I, I that was that was cool. It whet my appetite for that uh, for that video to uh, not only show off the collection, but uh, show off how you can use a uh, something designed for tools in the garage to actually uh, safely store a knife collection, or you know, uh, maybe even watches or or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Awesome. I, I enjoy that, Bob. And uh, if uh, our, our viewers and listeners have any thoughts about that, uh, your favorite uh, preferred method of knife storage, again, we would love to uh, hear from you. Either call the uh, listener line, the 24-7 recorded line at 724-466-4487, uh, 724-466-4487. Or how about this idea? Shoot a quick video on your phone showing off your storage method, what you like about them. And we would then love to share it here on a uh, future uh, episode of the Knife Junkie podcast. Now that uh, we're doing video and audio, I think it'd be a great way to uh, share some of your uh, storage solutions with, uh, with everybody else. Uh, something I'd like to see too is uh, kind of like how I, I did it on the traditional knife uh, video. I show my little, my little dresser drawer setup or my little EDC setup. If you have a little thing on your desk or a little thing on your dresser, you know, where you put your watch and your knife and your comb and you know, all your little EDC stuff. I'd love to see that kind of thing too. Right. That's, yeah. All right. All right. Well, we have covered a lot of ground here on the Knife Junkie podcast this week. Would like to uh, encourage you, if you are not yet a subscriber, please do uh, subscribe. If you go to the knifejunkie.com slash subscribe, that's kind of a one-stop page for being able to subscribe to the 
audio podcast, the video podcast, as well as the Knife Junkies newsletter. So the knifejunkie.com slash subscribe. It has all the links there that you'll be able to keep up with audio, video, and newsletter. And Bob, as we're wrapping it up, of course, reminder that uh, if you're listening when this show first drops, uh, tomorrow, Thursday, September 17th, is the Knife Junkies Patreon monthly Knife Junkie uh, giveaway, knife giveaway. So if you want to make sure you get in that at the last minute, go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. And then uh, remind you that this coming Sunday is the Knife Junkies interview show. This coming Sunday, it's going to be Michael Martin, a, a good old boy from North Carolina, just like myself. And I, uh, I love that interview and uh, some great things that uh, folks are going to hear from from Michael Murphy coming up on Sunday, Bob. Yep, American Blade Works. Uh, he's knocking it out of the park with his uh, with his knife, the Model One, and the uh, and the nimble I iterations. He just keeps coming out with improved versions of it, and uh, right. it's awesome stuff. All right. So look for that uh, this coming Sunday. Again, if you're a uh, Knife Junkie Patreon member at any level, you'll get early access to that interview on Friday. So just uh, one of the numerous reasons to become a member of the Knife Junkies Patreon at thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. All right, Bob, we have run uh, really long this week. Our midweek supplementals are normally not this long, but a lot of great stuff to cover. Final thought from you before we wrap it up today. Oh, nothing but thank you for your time. Thanks for listening to this show and, and uh, being an enthusiast. We all appreciate it. Absolutely. For Mr. Knife Junkie himself, Bob DeMarco, I'm the knife newbie, Jim Persons, saying thanks for joining us on episode 147 of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.